hello guys and welcome to your first unity c sharp tutorial on the crazy unity channel on youtube i am your tutor and my name is psych no i'm telling you my name ha, what do you want to use my name for what's important is what you learn so what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be creating um a 2d character ideal animation and also we're also going to create a movement animation and also cause the player to move yeah so we are doing all of that in one video so this is going to be pretty lengthy so sit back grab your bucket of popcorn no i mean <laughs> your keyboard because popcorn isn't going to help much and follow along so first of all what you do is that you open the unity hub and then when the unity hub opened you'd click on new um then you click on 2d project and you type the name of your project i know you know how to do this so i already have a project set up here for that and that's a tutorial so i'll click on that one and then you open it up okay with that slow us hurry up come on come on come on the guys are waiting they don't have time for all of this come on come on come on come on sucker all right now with it open now what we now do is that um you would basically have to import the sprites you're going to use for this project so in order to import the sprites i already have um sorry about that i'll just watching some fun anime so what we'll do is i will open the ninja girl character um sprites i'll make that available through the link that's going to be added that's added yeah so um you you drag it you drag it into your you know editor and then you wait for it to load up load load loading load i said a load 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 a load load i said a load 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 i said a load 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 and also the link to the song i just sang will be added just kidding anyway so now that is all done you now open it up but first for before that let's create we need to create three folders to make our work more organized even as crazy as i sound i like to make my stuff well organized so that i don't lose track of stuff so we create another folder called a controller i hope it's two l's i usually spell controller with three l's funny then finally we create a folder for the scripts all right now with that done we now open up our um we have an animation folder a controller folder and then a scripts folder so what we do first of all is that we need to create our animations so we open the pngs then now we now look for our idle animation then we click on the z idle zero and click and with shifts held down on our keyboard we click on idle nine you do that while holding shift so you click on idle zero while holding shift and then click on idle nine and then it selects all the nine then you drag them into your scene and then when them dragged into your scene you would now go to um uh, wherever you want to store it. so we we'll go to assets animation and then we call this one idle and then we save it okay now that it's now saved we now come here then we call this one player yeah so you can call it you can right click on it and click on rename or you can click on it and come here and do that i prefer this way it's cooler okay so um with that done if you should now go to animation folder we see our animation here make sure loop time is set on otherwise she's going to breathe in and she won't breathe out your player will die she will die and it's all going to be your fault murderer so now the next thing we'll do is that we would go to click on our ideal um controller and then we'll rename it as player controller so let's call it player i changed my mind i'll call it play, uh, player because seriously i can't type player controller it hurts my thumbs so we'll drag that straight into the controller folder now with that inside the controller folder we now have everything set and done now when we now click on play you can see our player breathing in and breathing out if you should turn off loop time she would breathe in and she won't breathe out and it's all going to be your fault she died so now with that done let's now try to create the movement for our player first of all let me show you something interesting go to the file go to build settings uh, and go to player settings and go to input manager you can see that for the horizontal we have left and right and all of them they said that the vertical the, the left is the negative button and the on the right is the positive button so what we're basically going to do here is that we are going to um click on we're going to our scripts folder and we'll create a new script to control the player so we'll go to create c sharp script and then we'll call it player and then what we'll do is that we'll click on our player come on player i clicked on you do something good 
so you now we'll drag this and into it then we'll, then we'll click on it to open it in visual studio so now with our script open in visual studio what we'll now do is that we will now create i want to show you how the horizontal and the, the horizontal input system works so when you type let's create a float point variable store so create a float for int variable called horizontal and then we'll go to our update we'll create an, our update function inside our update function we will see um our horizontal is equal to input to access our input manager dot get access horizontal make sure it's typed with a capital H or else you'll be typing something other than horizontal and only God knows what you are typing okay so now with that done we will now try to print out the value so that you guys would know what's actually going on so debug dot log not log error what the hell horizontal good now with that done let's now um let me drag this up so that you can actually see what's going on here so when we play this you can see that when we press the right button it moves from zero to one and when we press the left button it moves from zero to negative one coolio all right so now we drag this back to its rightful place welcome home son all right so now with that done in order to move our player we need to add a rigid body component to our player so we'll click on add components rigid body 2d or you can click on in case you can't find just click on add component and type rigid type rigid body you'd see it's rigid body 2d or you can come up to components physics 2d and then rigid body 2d ha huh. anyway so now with that done we now need to open up our script and before we do anything we don't want our player um with the rigid body now present on the player our player has now become an actual rigid body so if you should play this game right now, the player will start falling. Superman flies, but Sucker Ninja Woman falls. Can you believe that? Anyway, so we take off her gravity to make her able to float in air at least. She can be on par with Superman for now. So now with that done, we um So now with that done, we, we if you should play the game now, she doesn't fall and she's happy. Yay, I can breathe in the air. Let's hope you don't die. So now with that, we now go back into this and then we create, we try to reference our rigid body. So we'll create a private rigid body and then we call it my rigid body. Make sure you type it correctly or else it's not going to work. All right. Now with that done, we'll now go to our start method and then we'll say um, my rigid body is equal to get component rigid body 2D good now with that done um we now need to be able to move our player using this rigid body because basically a rigid body um attaches particle systems to our player so it means that you cannot add the velocity add forces and stuff to all these particle systems present so we'll create a function called move so void move no not on animator move i knew they were going to do this suckers thinking they can think for me loses anyway um so now with this done we now uh try to add the velocity so we'll say um my rigid body dot velocity will be called to velocity this is a 2d game so with the velocity we'll use a vector 2 so new vector 2 not new oh come on new vector 2 and then inside this vector 2, it takes x and y values. We want our player to move around the along the x axis. Yeah, just imagine pressing the left arrow key and your player starts flying up or something. Like, that's just going to be so weird. So, make sure that you put the right things at the right place. So, see my rigid body dot, um, the velocity you add into rigid body should be a vector 2. And in that vector 2, first of all, let's create um, if a private float. And let's call it speed huh what the hell is great a private float called speed 
and then let's set it to f um let's just leave it that way let's make it serializable so that it's present in the inspector good so now with this we would now say that um the velocity we want to add to the player should be equal to the speed which will apply to the player times the value of the horizontal which we have stored here and then in the y direction we don't want our player to fly we're mm -hmm. making a run and we want it to run not fly if you want to see someone fly go and watch a marvel movie or dc comics movie we're not doing that here so rigid my rigid body which we created dot velocity dot y i knew this was going to happen our vector 2 wasn't actually a vector 2 it was something you need to made to make me look bad new vector two um i don't know what um actually goes on with unity nowadays but then when you type vector 2 they tell you that you need to use unity engine of vector 2 even when you even tell them you're using unity engine they still want you to do this i don't know whether they have trust issues or probably typing their name makes them feel better or something but then anyway let's just do what they tell us to do so my rigid body dot um uh, we add a velocity and then we'll see our speed times our horizontal and then here we'll see um my rigid body dot velocity dot y if you want it to fly you can put something there but then i'm not interested in making people fly i don't work at marvel or dc comics so now we'll come into our update function and then we'll call our move function move the, the update function is called every frame so putting the move function there means that this move we are going to be adding the velocity every frame when we press the key so now let's now try this out if it doesn't work that means that you guys watching it, this video didn't make it work and it's all your fault and it's not my fault for being a bad programmer let's try it out uh oh i think this is not going to work i forgot to add the speed you guys should have reminded me by shouting from the future before you watch this video okay so now when we now now that we've added our speed to the player and the inspector um when we try to move the player left or right left right you see she moves yay we did it so now we're that done um there's one thing i want to tell you guys we have a private variable and a public variable in unity with private variables they're not visible in the inspector so if i should make the speed if i should take out the serialized field and make the speed a private variable you see that the hell so you see that um the speed has disappeared from the inspector good so um if i should make it serializable again serialized again um you can see that it's okay you guys can't see you can see that it's present it's back and now when we play so if you want to make um if you want to create usually private variables are created for extra protection when you don't want add your variables to be accessed in other scripts another thing you can do is to make it public if you make this public and remove the serialized out it would be visible in the inspector but yes that other scripts can um access it and probably some hacker somewhere can take your game and add a velocity of 50 and make your player run very fast <laughs> you want that to happen huh anyway so now with that done um we are done with trying to move our player now now let's now try to add the run animation so what we'll do is that we'll go back into our um sprites list and then we'll go to our run animation then from run zero usual the usual process would we'll hold down shift and then we we'll would go to run and click and then we we'll drag it into then we'll go to our assets animation and then we'll store it there as run then we we'll save it good now we we'll go to our assets we we'll go to animation and we we'll delete the run controller because we are going to use the controller from the idle for everything so now with that done 
um let's delete this run from the um scene the inspector because we do seriously don't want to give you the guys the idea that we are dealing with illusions here i ain't no magician all right so now with that done we we'll drag this up here and then we'll open up our animator and we we'll arrange these guys up they just want to be so disorganized then we we'll drag the run straight up here all right we did it we did it again can you believe that all right so we'll go to our animator and then we want our players to be able to move we don't want our players to start running if we, if i should right click and click on um set as default states and we should open the game just watch what's going to happen here look at this she's running when i started the game just imagine a game where you start the game and the character starts running you're like what the hell is going on here you think it's a bug it's not a bug the damn programmer forgot to change stuff anyway so right click on our idol and click on set as layer default you want to be able to transition from um our idle state into our run state and we also need to be able to move from run back to idle so right click make transition run and right click from run make transition back to idle good now with that done we would uh we need to set conditions first of all click on the run and make sure you take out exit time and then the transition duration make it zero and remove the on take the fixed duration as well do the same for here on take this and then set this to zero the reason why we do this is because if you should leave an exit time for this and this she would take time before she um transitions from this stage to this stage and that's going to be very funny you leave for example if you're running towards a ditch and you leave the controller the control key she's still going to run into the damn ditch you're going to be like what the hell happened you the hell happened anyway so now um with that um with that done we are now going to make sure the run is on a loop as well because if you don't put it on a loop she would run for some time and when the animation is over she would stop running and she would freeze in the air and start sliding you can use that kind of cool effect if you want to make a skating board game or something but then we are not interested in that kind of stuff so now what we want to do is that we need to set conditions for her to be able to transition from um idle to run and run to idle so we'll click we would go to um, our parameters and then we have a float and integer in the bool but since we are, we are planning to use the value for the horizontal which you saw from zero to negative one and so on and so forth we would use the float okay because we are using float point values and then we'll call this float speed so we'll click on the transition from idle to run and then we'll see um we'll see our we'll click on the conditions here we'll click on the plus sign there and our speed must be greater than 0 0.01 okay <coughs> sorry i have a bad cough <coughs> all right then we'll do the same thing from here from idle back in from run back into idle then here we'll see it must be less than 0 0.01 okay coolio all right so now with that done when we now play the game and now we run she's not playing the run animation do you know why it's not supposed to work because we didn't tell her to do it how the hell you guys I, I seriously i know you guys were really expecting that she's going to run and be like oh yeah it worked but it didn't work anyway so we have to make a reference to our animator to be able to trigger the um run animation to be able to set the run animation so we'll create a private animator not animation do these guys not hear the words coming out of my mouth my i will call this my animator And then we'll come to our start function and then we'll see my animator is equal to um get component you know i actually say is equal to because i like my sql my sql is called my sql so i say my is equal to haha <laughs> yeah bad joke i know um um animator get components on the character called the animator and then boom you're done so now we now come to our move function and we now see that while the player is moving um my animator dot set float 
the flutes that we created called feet make sure you spell you spell it right here the same way you did here you use a small s you use a capital s you're going to be spelling the speed in fast and furious and the only thing that's going to be moving with speed is going to be your tears flowing down your eyes as you see that what you did isn't actually working so the flute you're going to be setting here is the horizontal and then you save that good now let's now see whether it works so now let's now try to um play this now she's not standing we're not trying to move see she's running see but when we press the when we move forward she runs forward but when we press back she moves back the reason is that we said she should only move forward she should only this should only happen when she when the speed is greater than 0 0.01 but when the speed is less than 0 0.01 she should move back to idle so what can we do because when you press the right uh, left arrow key the key is negative and the float here is definitely going to be negative so what do we do we use something called absolute function so we would come here and say math f dot apps and then we'll put this horizontal value inside it and then we save then we open back it back in the inspector and then we play it now let's now see when we move forward she runs forward when we move backward she runs backward okay in this tutorial the purpose of this tutorial has been saved i just wanted to teach you guys how to do the idle animation the run animation and cause the player to move i didn't uh this the this it's not part of this tutorial to teach you how to flip the character left or right so if you want to see how to flip the character left or right wait for the next tutorial okay yeah all right thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it make sure to hit that subscribe button and then i hope to see you guys next time and oh yeah before i forget i created this cool new game called zombie apocalypse and then it's on play store i think you guys really check it out it's a fun game to play and then when you guys um make sure you download it and leave me your reviews also let me know whatever it is you want me to do any video you want me to make in the comment section and i would do it a lot thank you for joining me in the session on crazy unity tutorials of course